I'm using Shotcut version 2002. First thing to notice, if I go in settings and check video mode, it's set to automatic. So if I open this iPhone video I made earlier today and download it to my, here we go. I started out in portrait orientation, so automatic it's going to make a vertical video and <clears throat> um, I don't want that. I want a horizontal video because um, if we look on later on in the video, I rotated it to make it landscape. So I'll choose File, New. And then I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to use the new project. And I'm going to change the video mode to 1080p 2997, since that's what my video was using. And we'll do um, Rotation Tutorial is the name of this project. And click Start. And again, open up that video. OK. You see it starts out vertical and then we'll see a sh quick period of rotation coming up here and so we need to rotate that part first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add this to the timeline click the plus button and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to find that period of the footage where it does the rotation see that spinning part here okay so somewhere in the middle I'll just choose to split the timeline at the playhead there and we have to trim away that part where it's spinning and rotating so what I'll do is I'll find the end of the vertical part that went too fast. I'll just step through using my um, keyboard arrow keys and step forward. You start to see it spinning or rotating here. So I'll go back a couple. And then I want to trim the first clip. So I'll drag it on the right edge here to the where the playhead is. It will naturally sn snap to the playhead when I drag it to there. So that's why we were positioning the playhead and we'll position the playhead for the next clip wait till it stops rotating there uh, that's good and then I'm gonna drag the left edge of that clip to meet the playhead and stop there but now we have a gap in the middle with black so I'm gonna right click on that blank area and then choose remove and then it pulls together great um, so first thing I'll do is I'm going to rotate this, the second clip. So um, I double click to select it and position the playhead at the beginning. Click filters, click plus, video, scroll down to find rotation. Here it is, rotate and scale. And then I'm just going to put in minus 90 degrees but now it's not filling so I will just drag the scale slider up to make it fill great let's preview that that looks good now let's come back to the first video clip so now we have a vertical video inside of a, a landscape um, there's different ways of handling this. You could just leave it the way it is if you want. Um, another way, let's say you want to just completely fill it and get rid of the black bars. Uh, make sure that it's selected and then click plus on the filters. We're going to find this filter called crop source. Here it is. And if I click center, it does exactly that. It, it removes the black padding. Um, now you, you see a lot of the video was chopped out. I mean, um, it's just not much you can do with that except for you can adjust which period is, you know, in focus, which part of the video is in focus. Um, 
So that's one way to deal with it. One effect that we see on TB a lot is they'll put a copy like this in the background with a heavy blur. So let me show you how that works. What I'm going to do is add a video track, select this clip, copy it, press the copy button here, and then I'm going to paste it onto the B2 track that I just added. So what I'll do is I'll um, click the B2 track so that it's current, press the home key on the keyboard to move the playhead to the beginning, and then click paste. Okay, and now with that top video selected, I'm going to remove the crop source filter. So now you see the full video with the center cropped video in the background, except we want to make the, the background video blurred out. So I will select that clip on the bottom and another filter, blur Gaussian. And I'm just going to turn that up all the way. So that basically accomplishes the effect. Now it's going to play back very choppy because these are some heavy filters in blending that's going on. You can experiment with using in this new version settings, preview scaling, say 360p, and it will be less quality for the preview but it would be faster. I'm just going to turn that off because if you see here, let me keep going on here. I'll show you what it looks like. Now you see if I stop here, yeah, that does look quite poor quality because we're using preview scaling at a pretty low resolution, 360. I'll just turn it back off for now. Uh, basically, that's it, and um, I will save my project, and then I'm going to export it, and I'm just going to click Export File. It'll automatically create a file name for me based upon my project name. I'll click Save, and wait for this to uh, export. Now yours might go slower. I'm using hardware encoding and a um, very strong system. Um, once it's done, you can right click, choose show in folder, and it will show you, you know, in Explorer or Finder on Mac OS where the file is on your file system. And now you can double click it to play it in your win media player for Windows. And this is what the final result looks like. That's it.